Reed has a very wide range of feed wheels available to cover many applications. The first feed wheel available is the lowest volume feed wheel. It's a 30 pocket bowl. There's no wear plate that consists with this. There's, there's 30 individual pockets. Note the depth is only one inch thick. This will convey between one to two cubic yards per hour with a very low air consumption between somewhere in the range of 185 to 250 CFM, usually with three quarter to inch and a quarter hoses. Next is the 21 pocket. 21 pocket is again dividerless, 21 pocket, with a wear plate, two inch thick bowl. With the wear plate, three and a half inches deep. Note with this, there's still a very low application, low volume spraying, two to four cubic yards per hour. Still a very even, smooth pace of material flow. Range of output, two to four cubic yards. Your air consumption comes up a little bit more from 250 CFM up to 450 CFM. Next is the 20 pocket. The bowl itself is four inches deep. The bowl and plate come to five inches deep. This is again a very smooth output bowl, ranging outputs from six to nine cubic yards per hour. CFM from 365 to 450 CFM. The deeper pocket would give you pr approximately twice the, the material per minute that the previous setup would give you, because mainly because of the deeper pocket holding more material. This is uh, one of the most standard bowls that we use, the 20 pocket, for a very wide range of applications. Now we have the standard 15 pocket. This is the most standard uh, series that we use uh, for swimming pools, tunnels, minings, a very wide range, aggregate size up to half inches. The bowl is four inches deep. And the wear plate on top brings it up to five inches deep. This is what the series looks like, standard 15 pocket. Air consumption comes up to between 650 to 750 CFM. Outputs again from nine to 12 cubic yards per hour. Now we're gonna get into some more specialty feed wheels. The first is the 15LA. Let me get the rock cone for that. The 15LA is good for high rock concentration. There's a rock cone that is used with this. This is inserted in the machine to, to divert all the material to the outer pockets. Therefore, the air comes down through the inner pocket and just pushes the material up and out so it's not going through the U pattern. In a very high rock concentrated mix, 50% rock or 100% rock can be conveyed through the machine using the LA system. This is the 15 pocket LA. Air consumption is between 650 to 750 PSI or CFM and between six to nine cubic yards per hour.
last one is the 12 pocket. This is the highest production bowl that we make, commonly used with mining or tunneling where there's a spray arm involved, so you want the highest production that reed can offer. Four inch stick on the feed bowl. Brings it up to five inches thick with the wear plate. Note there's only 12 pockets involved. So this is a, this is a feed wheel that would have to run at a very high speed so you keep a nice uniform flow of material. CFM is very important with this. This is anywhere from 750 CFM to 1200 CFM is used with this. And you can spray from 12 to 15 cubic yards per hour. A uh, large rock, again, can be used with this up to a three quarter inch rock. And the rock cone is also used with this. Rock cone right here. Again, the rock cone, which diverts all the material to the outer pockets. And the inner pocket is used just for air, just to pick up the material and send it through the hose at a very high rate. For some of the uh, refractories, uh, anti-acid mixes, anti-abrasion resistant materials, abrasion resistant materials, you have a, a very narrow moisture range in the material, build in the material. They, the manufacturer will try to make it as wide as he can, but sometimes you're talking about uh, plus or minus uh, an eighth of a percent and so therefore you need something to help you wet this material and Reed manufactures a number of uh, or manufactures and has available a number of nozzle arrangements to give you a little extra mix at this nozzle to help on this on these materials that are very difficult to wet even though you premix they're still very difficult and keep in mind we have high pressure water to this point with a needle valve but one one good setup is called a hydromix nozzle, where it's wet here and gives about two more feet of additional wetting rather than having just the tip in the wetting chamber. This gives a little extra mix. It is not difficult to handle, and it does a tremendous job on reducing rebound. It gives more time to mix, almost three times the distance than normal with just the tip in here. Another setup would be to put called a spiralette nozzle. It has an internal rifling effect inside. It's like threads in, in, inside the ID here. This is placed right in the wetting chamber. It forces the mix to, to mix, forces the material to mix with the water before it exits onto the wall. And this is another very good setup to help anything you can do to get the, remember, you must have the mix uniformly mixed with this water. Another nozzle that will help on the wetting or hydration of the mixes is called a double bubble. This forms an X pattern in here, and it's again resisting a straight exit of material. It's making it mix with the water more before it exits. It forms rather an X pattern in here. This is very good. <coughs> a lot of nozzle men like it in one sense that they can bend and make work around anchors and uh, various and hard places to gun. Then I will turn you over to Rich, who will mention some of the other nozzles that are available for certain applications. Okay, thank you, George. The first one here is uh, the small one inch, three quarter, one inch, or inch and a quarter nozzle. This is a very low volume nozzle for small finish work, sometimes repair work, restoration, that kind of work. This you could also bend the nozzle into various different directions to get into tight corners. The next one is a two inch nozzle, which is good for mining or tunneling, where a man can stand back further because the comes out at a very far pace from the man for shooting unstable rock. You can stand back far away and, and get the walls of the tunnel, like so. We will show you that <coughs> various cone outlets can be adapted to the same machine uh, where the material hose is hooked onto. The main thing is to make sure that the cone plate bottom matches, stays on and matches whatever rubber pad and wear plate and bowl assembly you're using. 
There's a wide range of goosenecks that are that are available from Reed. The first is the two inch. The two inch comes in two different types, either a liner type, which has a removable liner for replacement, or a solid steel, depending on which one works best with the material you're using. The next is the inch and a half, which works the same way. Again, the removable liner for replacement or the solid steel. And when you get down to inch and a quarter or below, just a solid steel for lower volume material sprayed. Again, the reminder is to keep the ID of the outlet cone the same as the material hose that you are using to the nozzle man. Reed also offers a wide range of hopper selections available. These two here I'm standing next to to my left are the short and tall premix hoppers. These are very good for people that are shoveling into the machine where they can take a scoop of material, throw it back into the machine, it would hit the back, the material would fall through, any large aggregate would fall off. That's very important so that the material, the large stuff falls off rather than the whole, all the material bridging on the top. The same thing is, is for good for this one. This one holds a little bit more material. These are also important for size requirements where it's going on a mixer or some type of a mixing device where the top of the machine is very important to keep it of a very low profile. The other hoppers that's uh, available is this one over here that George is going to talk about. This is mainly used with refractories, uh, the anti-acid material uh, and the uh, abrasion resistant materials, materials that you must try to control the a segregation. It has a tendency, it keeps the mix more uniform. That's very important. And it, you can use, some will use the direct bag breaker by dumping the material right in. Others may choose to premix and convey the premix material directly into the hopper. This is again important where you would keep the hopper approximately three fourths full, which helps tremendously on any blowback of the material. Right. To sum that up, basically, this hopper is used primarily in the refractory fields where we sell a lot of these for, also for prepackaged materials where they're breaking the bags on the top. This one is used where it's coming out of a ready mix truck or commonly uh, swimming pools use it a lot or people shoveling into the machine. That's where these hoppers would come into play. Reed offers a wide range of material hoses that can be used. This first hose here is a gum rubber tube. That's the inner tube in the hose. This is used for sand and cement and rock gunning. This is not to be used with a refractory. If you use it with a refractory, it'll wear out extremely fast. This is primarily used with sand and cement for usually civil type construction. This is what we offer for the refractory usage. It has a uh, carbon tube, which also helps reduce static electricity. This is a good wearing hose. Here's a hose that uh, is used two inch. This is used really well in underground applications. It also has a carbon tube, which also helps minimize static electricity. <coughs> These are the three hoses that we offer. Now, George is gonna talk about uh, air and electric drive. In the uh, air drive, there's two horsepower is available, five horsepower and nine horsepower. In the electric, there is one, which is a five horsepower. Both have, uh, both give you variable speeds, which is very, very important. As we all men already mentioned, the different bowl and wear plate setups offering dish different production rates, that means you also will be rotating this assembly in the feed mechanism the same way. And so you need the variable speed, whether it's electric or whether it is air. This is very important. And the idea of keeping the correct amount of a ratio of air to material flowing through the hose depends on your, how well you control the rotation of this assembly in here. Uh, whether you have electric or air depends on quite, uh, quite the uh, availability of what in your area can you rent compressors. Can you rent 500 or 1,000 uh, cubic feet per minute compressors? If you can't, then best to go to electric. Uh, keep in mind it is a 22440 setup, and uh, this will help you operate on a lower uh, air compressor, which maybe you can find in your area. If your compressors are available, 
I like to stay with the uh, air because it gives you, a, <coughs> you need air for your water booster pump and operate all on one thing. It's an easier and quicker setup, but they both have advantages and disadvantages depending on what you really have available. Okay, George, why would you use a 5-horsepower air motor versus a 9-horsepower? Okay, if you're putting a, a material 200 feet in the air with, the, say, the large production bowls, you need more horsepower to, to operate and get that material uh, rotation of the material and the feed mechanism in the, out into the material hose. Uh, weights of material, production rates, uh, you can only, especially... Uh, air motors you can only operate so slow. They will not operate at a very slow speed. Uh, they'll just cut out. So you want that so that it will continue. If you want to run it fast, you might be better off to go to a, a larger uh, horsepower. And, be, and especially if you're putting a heavy weight material, rock, heavy materials, and high elevation. Okay, so with air you have a fluctuation fluctuation with the air, but with electricity you have a, a wider range of being able to run it slower, is that correct? Electric, you could run it a little slower. Your vane motors will only allow you to run so slow. They have a tendency to want to cut out on the air. Yes, that's true. But <clears throat> again, it's based on the uh, feed bowl setup, the amount of material you're trying to get into that material hose, what the weight of that material is, how fast you want it to go in there. Uh, and it's, uh, I think, especially when you get into those large bowls, you just better decide that you have to have a nine horsepower motor or the, the big electric. Okay, that's good.